In this episode, we're bolting on our clutch, stitching up our tunnel, and enjoying the view. Let's go. In our last episode, we accessorized the LS3, got to work installing our radiator, made room for the Z06 air intake, and made a home for our drive-by-wire gas pedal. Now it's time to keep up the pace and tackle some more big jobs. Let's get to work. Clutch choice is vitally important in determining how your car will behave and perform. Too aggressive and you'll be miserable, fighting a stiff clutch pedal while bucking and stalling all over the place. But too conservative is bad as well, potentially ending up with slippage and the power not being put to the ground where it belongs. To mate our Tremec Magnum up to our LS376 525, I chose the T56 Magnum Transmission Installation Kit from Chevrolet Performance. The kit includes a 4th generation F-body style LS bell housing, an LS7 style 6-bolt flywheel, an LS7 style high strength clutch disc and pressure plate, a new clutch actuator cylinder, pilot bearing, dust covers, all of the hardware needed, and excellent instructions. Once again, Chevrolet Performance has nailed it with this all-in-one solution to the potentially complicated problem of mating your T56 transmission to your LS3. Plus, you get the peace of mind of a well-sorted OEM clutch setup that's strong and reliable. The installation begins by removing the automatic transmission flex plate that came pre-installed on our crate engine. We did this a while back when we used the bell housing for our first engine test fit. Now we lower the engine assembly down onto our dolly and unhook it from the hoist. With that in place, it's time to install our flywheel. These clutch components often have a protective coating on them that needs to be wiped off, so be sure to get everything good and clean before bolting them together for good. Now the flywheel is bolted up using the required hardware and the tightening procedure and torque specs found in the instructions. A good clutch alignment tool will save you lots of headaches while trying to line up your transmission, so I opted for this sturdy steel unit from RAM. You can also use this strong tool to drive in your pilot bearing nice and straight. With that in place, it's time to bolt on the clutch disc and pressure plate, making sure to keep the assembly perfectly aligned while tightening everything down. The Chevy Performance instructions include all of the torque figures and tightening patterns, which really helps things go smoothly. Next, we bolt the bell housing onto the transmission and torque it to spec. Here's a look at the Mazda 6-speed transmission next to our new Magnum. They're actually not that far off in size from one another, but the Magnum is heavier thanks to its beefy internals. The V8 bell housing is much bigger around, which is why we had to open up the Miata's tunnel and firewall area. 
With the bell housing on, we can install the hydraulic release bearing or the clutch actuator cylinder as it's referred to in the instructions. But before we do that, we'll need to make a couple of modifications to the cylinder itself. This is the V8 Roadster's LSX clutch kit. The kit includes a Willwood master cylinder and reservoir, an adapter plate to mount it to the Miata's firewall, a heavy-duty clevis pin to work with the stock clutch pedal, the fittings needed to match up to the T56 release bearing, and two DOT-approved stainless steel braided lines for the supply and bleed lines of the release bearing. The remote bleed line is especially important, as there isn't much room in the Miata's transmission tunnel to try and bleed the setup without it. To install the kit, first I removed the stock GM fittings from the release bearing and installed the new AN fitting adapters from V8 Roadsters. So here's a look at the entire clutch hydraulic assembly for our big V8. While we're at it, it's a good time to open up this mounting hole on the firewall to make sure our new Willwood master cylinder will fit snugly. Next, we install the modified release bearing onto the transmission's input shaft and run the supply and bleed lines through the bell housing and then tighten them down. Alright folks, it's time to mate up the T56 Magnum to the LS376-525 for good. Since the T56 weighs around 130 pounds, I used the engine hoist with a load leveler to help with the job. I also used this great tip that I found on the LS1 Tech forums, which involves cutting off the head of a long bolt, notching it so a screwdriver will fit, and using it as a transmission guide pin. This worked really well and saved plenty of time and aggravation, I'm sure. Oh man, I like it. While cooling the engine is important, keeping the driver and passenger cool during the hot and humid summer months is important too. Since we repositioned the radiator, the AC condenser needs a little relocating also. The condenser wasn't too far off, so I whipped up a couple brackets and welded them in place. All right, now it's time for our final test fit. Here we go. With 
With the rear of the transmission supported, I tightened up the front subframe bolts. Now that the engine and transmission are being supported by the chassis and subframe, we can take a good look around to make sure all of our engine bay, transmission tunnel, and firewall mods are good to go. The passenger side cylinder head is the tightest area, but the camera is a little deceiving as there is a good amount of room back here. We've also got the proper clearance at the top of our bell housing where we had to make a little notch in the firewall. Everything's looking pretty good under here. In a previous video, I showed you the V8 Roadster's mounting kit, which includes these strong frame rails and transmission crossmember. With the engine and transmission in the chassis, it's a good time to temporarily mount the transmission crossmember and frame rails and mark their position. Everything fit great without any modification needed, which is a testament to the quality of these parts. We'll install these for good after we tackle a couple more jobs under here. For now, the frame rails come back out, as does the engine and transmission combo. Since our final test fit went well, we're ready to stitch up the transmission tunnel modifications that we made. Welds were made both underneath and from inside the car to make sure everything was sealed and strengthened properly. Here's a look at how the welded firewall and transmission tunnel area turned out. The last step is to weld in these firewall braces that we removed early on. Since the shape of the transmission tunnel has changed, these braces required a little tweaking here and there to get a proper fit. Once the fit was sorted, it was hours of welding and fitting to get them back on and stronger than ever. Here's a look at our welded tunnel and firewall braces all finished up. Look, I love welding as much as the next guy, but I'm glad I can give the old Lincoln a well-deserved rest. Thank you for watching and be sure to visit summitracing.com for all of your horsepower needs. You can also follow them on Facebook and Twitter as they're always sharing interesting stories, tech tips, and customer cars and projects. In the next episode, we seal up all of our chassis mods and then put on a nice new lizard skin coat. For more pictures and details on this build, check out my website, v8mazda.com. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.